We've just finished building our version of the Prisoner Village. As we see it in the Prisoner TV series, this is our version of Port Merion, a wonderful village built by Clough Williams Ellis. And what we've done is just come up with our own sort of dreamy, exaggerated version of it, using all our usual materials, paper mache, we've used wood, cardboard, little cardboard boxes, bits of plastic, bits of crockery, and we're so happy with this because we've used a lot of organic material, we've used bits of uh, bark of trees, and little twigs, bits of lichen, and um, all kinds of uh, moss and stuff, stuff from hanging baskets, things like that, and rocks, bits of pebbles and things. We've had a lot of um, enjoyment finding these materials and then bringing them together to create this sort of a homage to the village and to the TV series all in one. Um, so we're going to explain a little bit if you'd like to see how we made this, the processes and show some pictures of ourselves when we went to Port Marion and the development of the whole thing, why we decided to do it this way. So if you'd like to see some of that then there's lots to come. So it was last year, 2012, we went to Port Merion for a visit for a day trip, remember Steve? And partly of course because of the Prisoner TV series. And we loved it, we had a wonderful time. Uh, and since that time we've been trying to think how we could do a model mm. of Port Merion, or more specifically the Prisoner Village. Um, paper mache probably, and um, we, but we're going to make a decision. Are we going to try and do a scale model of Port Merion? correct and accurate as, as we can manage or are we going to go for a sort of our own version of it and I think that's what we've decided we're going to do a version of uh, the prisoner village it'd be like a homage to Port Mary in won't it and it's something that perhaps Ellis himself would have done at some point but we've got a board base here which is a nice circle of wood and we'll raise up levels using cardboard boxes won't we see like that, that sort of thing uh, we can create a road which comes up and um, maybe bring it up to about 12 or 18 inches high at the highest point. These pictures were taken in 2012. We went with our mate Tony to Port Merion uh, just for a day trip. We were very lucky, although it was uh, October, it was dry and we managed to get around pretty well. And um, you know, Port Merion being quite an up and down place, Steve's uh, powered wheelchair really performed well. We got right down onto the stone boat and uh, mostly round the village. Did really well actually. And gave us such a lot of inspiration and good times. Um, and even then we were thinking about this model. So it's nice to uh, reach a conclusion uh, on a project like this and come full circle if you like back to um, the, the beginning. We started off with a piece of wood that we showed earlier and we had, had a load of little plastic boxes um, from, from a market stall that sold watches and we used those to build little supports. Then we had a tea break I suppose you could say. We used lots of cups to weigh them down with while they glued and we started to build up the cardboard sort of a platform for the base of Port Merion. Um, different kinds of cardboard boxes, we just shoved them together and tried to make a vague shape, something with a hollow in the middle and then a ridge going around the outside getting higher and higher because we thought the plan might be is to have a road going all around the model so that you could drive a little car um, all around it for kids to play on and enjoy, that, enjoy the, mo the model in a different way. We did this before actually, we did a, an Italian job um, scene on the mountain and we had a, a road going around like this. It works well because it's great fun for kids to be able to drive a little car, push it all the way around from one end to the other. So that's what all what we planned on happening with this model and it's worked out well. 
uh, the boxes began to build up. We used masking tape to hold them together and PVA glue and then started to cover the whole structure with newspaper and wallpaper paste and of course then it began to gain strength and we added in the pieces of bark that we collected from the trees and screwed those on we um, experimented with little little crockery houses that you can get um, but um, wanted to source uh, buildings from different places so we've got some crockery houses and decided to make some as well with with bits of cardboard or cardboard shapes paint them cover them in colored paper and then mix and match a bit like Clough did really with his real buildings so we were it was great to be able to mirror the incredible efforts that he yeah, he'd I mean, made i think you're onto a winner you're just sorting out all these of course details, where his buildings weighed tons yeah. and tons as weighed just ounces so it was a lot easier for us to do I was really amazed when we read in the book about, I think it's the colonnade, weighed a hundred tons and moved it piece by piece by road. What an incredible effort that was. And here's us doing just little cardboard boxes, hardly the same thing. But it's a tribute nonetheless, and it's done with feeling. Used watercolour paints when we uh, painted these little boxes. And some of them are covered in just coloured paper, so then we could draw windows and glue those on. And not with too much um, concern about getting the buildings accurate, of course. Um, just to give a general impression, a representation. Sort of as if you imagine if you'd only visited Port Merrim once and then you had only a one day's memories to build it with. We were very lucky to acquire six old battered dinky mini moaks. Um, they were for nothing. We, we got, we were given them, so we can't get a better bargain than that. Um, our job was to colour them, fix them up, and replace the bits that were missing. There was some bonnets and window frames missing, so we just did those with with serial packet card. Um, and the canopies all had to be done, but that's um, no problem. The thing began to take shape. We were very happy when we noticed the. The little buildings, they, they contrasted nicely, the colours, sort of pastel colours, contrasted well with the, uh, the grey um, rock effect we painted on the, uh, on the uh, newspaper. Really nice contrast, and little bits of plastic foliage started to, again, add contrast and um, texture and stuff like that. Really had a good feel to it as we were constructing it. The road round the back, painted all in dark grey to contrast against the light grey rock. Very pleasing. And we left the sort of middle area more or less till last. And that had some of the key features of, of the village, of course, the piazza and stuff. Again, we did, did not attempt to make an accurate um, scale model. We just put in some of the key features that we thought were appropriate and that we could manage to make and then place them relatively close-ish to what we thought they were in real life. We had made this decision, as I mentioned earlier, about not making an, an accurate model, just a version of the thing, of the whole place. And so we ran with that and it was a really great thing to do, very satisfying. And of course really old school, lots of stuff going on here basic model making skills techniques the sort of thing you would do on a model railway and of course with that comes um, the, the, fa the fact that you don't have to stress about making sure everything is perfectly accurate and measured and this has to match that and so on all the time we were doing this and um, we were able to watch all the prisoner episodes because um, a good friend of ours Robin loaned us a DVD box set um, so we was able to catch up on all the episodes hadn't even seen them all um, before properly so it was again great research to um, watch all the episodes in order 
full version in color, fantastic. Of course that's great research on Port Marion too because as everyone knows it's all in there. It all ties together very nicely. And, uh, need to get the back of it. We feel satisfied we've been able to um, pay tribute to um, Clough Williams Ellis and to Patrick McGowan for their efforts in putting such a thing together. It will last forever of course. There'll always be fans of the prisoner, as with, as with all these other things that we've um, made tributes to, so this, that these sort of programs and films will always be around. They'll just get older, but they won't. Um, they'll, 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 they won't be forgotten. That's for sure. So our whole the whole thing there is really pretty solid, and it's obviously a circle, as you know. Um, and we're going to display it in the library which is good for us, lots of people get to see it and kids can play, use, drive the cars around the road so it will be interactive there's our mini mokes, we've got six of them as you know we did the canopies with paper and just painted watercolour stripes on them we haven't worried about scale either, some of those little crockery houses they look great but they're out of scale doesn't matter, doesn't matter at all even even Clough himself messed around with scale in the real Port Marion, so we feel justified in that way. <laughs>